Okay, if we have this expression, the pressure equal to nRT over volume, we can replace the pressure by using this expression. So eventually, we have uh, this integral nRT over volume, volume. Okay, and this is a very easy integration, and the result is log function nRT times log v uh, after the expansion over the, pre, uh, the volume before the e expansion. So this is a ratio of the volume, and we take a log times nRT. Okay, so if this is an expansion, we will have v1 smaller than v2. So the volume after the expansion is larger than the volume before the expansion. So we have work larger than zero. That's a positive. And if the work is larger than zero, that means from this equation, the heat is also positive. This is absorption. So all of the heat absorbed by the chamber is converted into the work. And for the compression, we have volume larger than and beginning, beginning of the process, the volume is the largest. After the compression, the volume decreases. So we have a negative work because this is smaller than one. So we have a negative work and we have negative heat. That means this chamber is releasing heat. Okay, let me take a pause here. Do you have any question? Okay, if you don't have question, let me move on. So, um, we already talked about the isothermal expansion. And this is a process when the temperature is a constant during the process. The second expansion I'm going to talk about today is when the pressure is a constant. Um, suppose we have chamber and I have piston and I load a weight. Okay. Uh, on the piston and the weight is 100 kilogram and it's very heavy. And in the equilibrium state, we know the pressure inside the chamber is equal to the pressure loaded by the weight. So during the expansion, if the chamber expands or compress, the move up or down at any instant, the pressure is equal to the weight. So the constant is a pressure during the expansion. If the pressure is a constant, we call this process is isobaric expansion. Isobaric expansion means pressure is constant. Or we say the change of the pressure is zero. Okay. And we still need to calculate the work, the heat, and the internal energy. Um, let's calculate the work first. Work is very easy. If we draw the PV curve in the graph, pressure is constant, so I have a flat line. A flat line gave me the process of the thermal expansion. If we know the initial volume and we know the final volume, then the work is area of this curve. That's a work. The work equal to the pressure times the change of the volume. Okay, then the next one is the heat. The heat um, from the isobaric expansion we talked about last week, the heat under a constant pressure has a relation 
between the temperature and the heat. That's the number of particles times heat capacity at the constant pressure divided by, by the pressure uh, by the change of temperature. Okay, so you might have a question: How do I get the change of the temperature? From the equation of state, we have Ev in RT. The pressure is constant and there's no leaking. So if the volume increase, the temperature will increase. Okay, so in that case, change of the temperature should equal to the pressure times the change of volume over NR. So we can replace the delta T by using this formula, we get the heat in Cp T delta V over Nr. And we can uh, remove the number of particles. So eventually we have Cp times pressure times the change of the volume over a constant R. So that's the heat. And the same thing if the volume exchange uh, expand volume larger than zero, then we have a positive heat. So this is absorption. And if the volume decrease, then the heat is negative. So this is a release. And the last one I'm going to talk about is uh, internal energy. Internal energy, let's use a general question, uh, equation. That's the uh, 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 number of particles times CV, the heat capacity times the change of the temperature. And we know the change of temperature during the isobaric expansion is this one. So we can replace by this guy and we have and cancelled, eventually we have CV times pressure delta V over R. Okay, that's uh, three parameters we can calculate in the isobaric expansion. Do you have any question? Okay, if you don't have question, I'm going to move to the last process I'm going to talk today. That's the adiabatic expansion. This is a little bit abstract. Um, into this process, the expansion or the compression give us a process when this chamber is isolated from the ambient environment. So if I use a very huge wall, to isolate this chamber uh, from the outside. So outside, the temperature will change. Um, if I draw the temperature as a function of time, outside depends on the season, spring, summer, fall, winter, and the temperature change um, anytime. We can not control, but inside the chamber, because I use a very huge wall to isolate uh, this chamber from the ambient environment. The temperature inside change doesn't depend on the temperature outside. So inside of, of the chamber, the temperature can change in its own way. So this temperature inside the chamber and the temperature outside the chamber has no relation. independent of the temperature outside. And you can imagine a bottle, and this bottle can isolate the heat um, from the, uh, the ambient temperature, and you can keep hot water into this bottle 
or 24 hours, or you can just store some ice inside the bottle and it doesn't melt for one day or two days. So this is a process when the ambient temperature and the uh, chamber has no energy exchange. That means if there's no energy exchange, the chamber doesn't absorb heat or release heat. So the change of the heat is zero. So if the heat is zero, then we call this process as adiabatic expansion. In the adiabatic expansion, there's no energy exchange. between the chamber and the environment. Okay, so let's figure out um, the other two parameters. We want to know the internal energy, heat, and work. The heat is zero. So we have internal energy equal to negative work. That means if the internal energy decrease is negative, then the chamber is going to do positive work because there's a minus sign in front of the work. So if the internal energy increase, that means something is doing work to the chamber. So the work done by the chamber is negative. Let me use uh, positive and negative. If this is positive, work is negative. If this is negative, work is positive. So that means the loss of the internal energy. is convert into the work. Okay, so let's figure out uh, the, uh, the value of the delta U and the delta W. So we have delta U equal to the general equation that's uh, N, number of particles, heat capacity at the constant volume times the change of temperature. Okay. And the work and is equal to pressure times the change of the volume. And we can use the equation of states, EV and NRT to get the relation between the delta V and delta T, delta V uh, and the pressure change and the temperature change. We can get a relation of this, two pairs of the relationship. Um, but we still need to figure out, because in the equation of state, both pressure, volume, and temperature are not constant. So it doesn't uh, look like the isothermal expansion or the uh, isobaric expansion. In the isothermal pressure, uh, expansion, temperature is uh, constant. The isobaric expansion, the pressure is constant. But in this process, the three parameters are not constant. But we have a relation. You can check the equation sheet or your textbook in the ad Adiabatic expansion, we have this relation. The pressure times uh, the, the volume is a constant. Uh, the volume has a power. The power is Cp over Cb. is a ratio of heat capacity at the constant pressure and the constant volume. So I'm going to give you the derivation and how can I get the relation? Okay. So, so far, let me take a pause 
Um, do you have any question? Hmm. Okay. If you don't have a question, I'm going to give you the derivation. The derivation is all about the mass. So you don't need to memorize this one. Uh, the only thing you need to know is how I get the relation. Um, the final relation. This is what you need to know. Okay. The derivation here, we know the internal energy equal to negative work. The internal energy we know is equal to number of particles and heat capacity times uh, the change of temperature. And the work is pressure V. And to get the relation between the V and the P, we need to uh, rule out the, uh, the effect of the temperature. I want to replace the temperature. I want to write down an equation, the temperature as a function of pressure and V to replace the delta T. Then I only have the pressure and the volume in the equation. So my objective is to replace delta T. How can I do that? And from the equation state, remember is NRT. And let's do the derivative on the both sides. So the derivative, derivative. Okay. Uh, on the left side, we have uh, volume change of the pressure plus the pressure change of the volume. This is derivative. The delta is a difference, and the difference is a derivative. And on the left side, no leaking, so n is a constant, r is a constant. I'm going to do the derivative of the temperature or the difference of the temperature. Okay, then um, we are going to get the delta t. So we going to divide the nr, so delta t is equal to v, delta t plus p, delta t over Mm, nr. Okay, now I have a relation between the vp and the delta t. So I will replace the delta t and by using this expression. So on the left side, I have ncv. Delta t is v delta p nr. On the left side, I have a negative t. Delta V. Okay. Right side, left side. I just replace the delta T by using this expression. Okay. And you will find that the N just cancel. And then we know the R actually is equal to the difference of the heat capacitance. The heat capacity has constant volume, uh, constant pressure minus the heat capacity at the constant volume is equal to the R. This is what we get from last Thursday. Okay, you can check your, your notebook and find the relation. So I'm going to replace the denominator. Okay, the denominator will be CP minus CV. And I'm going to divide the CV on the denominator. Uh, first term, that's our gamma, because we define the gamma is a ratio, just a notation, equal to CP over CV. So this is gamma. Red color, gamma, and this is number one. So this relation could be simplified as V delta P plus P delta V. Denominator is gamma minus one equal to minus P delta V. And I'm going to multiply the gamma minus one on the right side. So we have V delta P plus P delta V equal to uh, minus 
one minus gamma. Okay. So this is equal to P delta V minus gamma P delta V. And it will find that P delta V just cancel. So we have V delta P equal to negative gamma P delta V. And I'm going to divide the, the, P, the V on the right side. I divide the P on the left side. So this equation become a derivative equation. And to solve this derivative equation, we only need to use integration on both sides. We have integration on both sides. So this integration is log P minus gamma log V. And because it's an integration, we can cross any constant. Cross any constant. When we do the derivative, the constant just gone. So we can cross any constant. And we can also do the exponential on both sides. So on the left side, the exponential is P. On the right side, the exponential is a constant times the V minus gamma, right? And I can much by a V of gamma on the left side, so eventually we get Pressure V of gamma equal to a constant. Okay, this is how we get the relation here. So that means in the adiabatic expansion, you only need to know the pressure and the volume has a relation. This is from um, our derivation. And since we know, gamma is equal to CP over CV here. And, and we know CP is equal to CV plus R is equal to one plus R over CV is larger than one. So gamma is larger than one. And let's draw the TV curve of adiabatic. Adiabatic, TV curve, it looks like this. And this curve has expression, pressure, volume of gamma equal to constant. And if you still remember the isothermal expansion, the isothermal expansion, we have P pressure times the volume equal to NRT. As a thermal, this is a constant. So P times V is a constant. So we have another curve. This is isothermal. If they start at the same pressure and the same volume, after the expansion, you will find the slope of the adiabatic expansion is larger than the slope of isothermal expansion because this is P v of one equal to constant. But the adiabatic expansion is P v gamma is larger than one. So the adiabatic expansion has larger, uh, larger slope, slope, larger. Okay. So this is uh, adiabatic expansion. Um, do you have any question? I know some of the uh, derivation is a little bit complicated, but eventually we need this. We need. This is what we need. Okay, any question? Uh, if you don't have a question, I'm going to give you a problem. So this is a heat engine doing the work in a circle. And you can find that there are four process. First one, and the cylinder has a piston contains 
uh, several molars of the oxygen, and it starts from point A, point A here, with pressure, volume, and temperature. Okay, so this is at point A. So in the full process, it's doing a circle, then go back to the point A. So the first process is uh, uh, isobaric expansion. So at a constant pressure, it starts from state A to state B. So this process, pressure is constant. So this is isobaric expansion. Second one, from B to C, and it cools at a constant volume. So this is a process of cooling. This is a cooling process. From C to D, that's a, uh, process three, the gas is compressed at a constant temperature at volume, four liter. So this is isothermal compression, isothermal. Okay, then from D to A, says it's heated at a constant volume. So this is a heating process. The volume doesn't change. Okay, so it goes back to A. And we are looking for pressure, volume, and temperature at each state. So to figure out the uh, each bracket in this table, we only need one equation. That's the equation state. equation of state, the pressure, volume, and the temperature is what we're looking for in each state. The number of particle is 0.324 molar. So that means this is a constant. It, there's no leaking during the process. And if we know the three parameter, you can solve the last one. So uh, for the part A, and we have volume, temperature, and the number of particles. So the pressure could be solved. That's 202 kPa. And you already have this number in the description. And from the B to C, B to C, uh, there's a cooling system. The volume doesn't change. So I just copy this volume, 0 0.004 meter cube. And we can use this volume to solve the pressure. We are going to use the equation state, and you will get the pressure is 112 kPa. And from B to C, it's a constant um, temperature. So we have uh, volume, and we have the temperature. And at the point C, B to C, the volume is a constant. Uh, hold on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got it. From A to B, the constant is a pressure. So I'm going to copy the pressure. Then I'm going to solve the volume. The volume I saw is 0 0.006. And from B to C, volume is a constant. So I copy the volume. And I can solve the pressure. The pressure is 112. And from C to D, we cannot know the pressure and the, the volume, but we know from A to D, the volume is the same. So from A to D, volume is the same, so I copy this number. Volume is 0 0.004 meter cube. And from C to D, temperature is a constant. So C to D, constant. So copy the temperature, 250K. Then we can solve the pressure, the pressure we get is 168. Okay, so can you follow me this flow? Um, I just write down um, the arrow to tell you which, um, which cell should be filling first. Then you can follow this rule to get, uh, to complete this form. So this is the first one, then come here, then come here, go here, here, 
and we are going to figure out the volume and the temperature of temperature and temperature here. Then we can solve the pressure. Okay, any question? If you don't have question, one more problem. We are going to calculate the change of temperature, internal energy, heat, and the work for each process. Okay. The change of temperature is an easy case because we already have the temperature in this column. Right? So I just do the subtraction. A to B is 150K. B to C, B to C, temperature decrease, so that's minus 200K. C to D, isothermal, so that's zero. D to A, how about D to A? D to A, increase, temperature increase, that's 50. And the total, we just sum this four number, that's zero. That makes sense, because when you complete a circle, it go back to the original state. To the original state, temperature, pressure, and the volume are the same. Are the same to the uh, this three parameters at the same state is the same. How about the internal energy? How about the internal energy? We know the internal energy um, is equal to number of particles, heat capacity, the constant volume times the temperature. We know the N point three two four motor and the temperature we get from the first column. So how to get the heat capacity? So the heat capacity you can find on the uh, equation sheet. The equation sheet gave you um, many things, including the uh, number of particles, the R, and the heat capacity, CV, and the heat capacity of CP. So this is what you can find in the equation sheet. And in this case, we have oxygen. Oxygen is um, uh, by atomic molecules. That means you have two items. The two items means um, the heat capacity is equal to five over two R. Okay, this is uh, you can find on the equation sheet. So in this case, you can calculate the delta U. Okay, so to get a delta U, you just need to use the temperature you get from the first column, multiplied by the number of particles and the CV. So you will get the same thing. Let me just copy and uh, the result and the unit is joule because the temperature, the total temperature is zero, so the total internal energy change is also zero. Okay, um, those are the second column of the internal energy. Let's Talk about the work. Work is equal to pressure times the change of volume. Okay, and the uh, pressure times the change of volume. Uh, These two value could be found on the table one. We know the pressure at each process, and we know the change of volume. Change of volume, just do the difference. So in this case, you will find that if the volume doesn't change, 
For example, from B to C, the volume down chain, from D to A, the volume down chain. So these two processes, you will get zero work. How about A to B? A to B, the work equal to the P times delta V. Pressure from A to B is 202, 202 kPa. And the volume, about volume, volume from A to B, the change of the volume A to B is 0 0.002, it increased by two. So you'll get 404 joule. How about um, C to D? C to D is isothermal. And we are going to calculate the area of this guy. And because this is a compression, the volume decrease, we will get a negative number. And this area is equal to, we just derived at the beginning of this class, work equal to nRT times log. This is the expression. So after you plug in the number, you will get a negative 273. Okay, then when you do the total, you will get a non-zero value, 131 gel. That means for each circle, you have done the positive work. That's a, a good hit engine. If after a circle you get zero work, that means this engine doesn't do any work. Then for the heat, we only need to use um, the first equation of thermodynamics. Heat equal to the internal energy plus work because we have uh, the first law of thermodynamics, change of internal energy equal to the heat minus the work. So the heat equal to the change of the internal energy plus the work. So you just use this guy plus this guy. Then you get the heat. So the first one, 14, 14 gel. Second one, negative 13, 46 gel. Third one, negative 273 gel. Third one, 360 gel. And when you do the, uh, the total, you will get the same one. Okay, so it absorbs 131 gel and do 131 gel work. So all of the heat absorbed by the engine converted into the work. Okay, so let me stop here. Do you have any question? Okay, if you don't have question, uh, you can uh, go. And don't forget, we have quiz on Thursday. Thank you. Mm -hmm.